In a thrilling showdown, two heavyweight giants are set to reignite their once bitter rivalry. From the O2 Arena London, uh, let's get this party started! Feeling of winning again will be amazing. Yeah. So yeah, personally, not for anyone, not the belts for anyone, just for me internally, that feeling of winning is everything. And that was some fight. From Brixton, Billion, the body snatcher. Last time we fought, you know, it was new coach, new things I was doing at Chinatown Banks wanted me to do, you know, I was trying to learn the, the new style, box, jab, did this and that. No, 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 forget that. Um, I, I was just go to war. I want to go to war because um, I think that's a good way to fight against the pressure and back him up. I start getting him on the back foot as early as possible, you know, and I'm strong enough and big enough to do that and carry enough power to obviously back him up and to, and to knock him out. The division's changed since I've been champion, if I'm honest. Careers on the line, world championship ambitions are on the line, and it's absolutely must win for both. There is an element of I understand what got me here, definitely, but even though that rawness got me so far, how far would it, how would I still be in the game? Do you know what I mean? I might have been like, you know what, this is too much. I ain't got anything about me except for a big left hook and a big right hand. Sometimes you make a fight where you can feel the street. What I mean by that is, at any time, anywhere, these two could go. Joshua hitting after the bell and White not having any of it. White's lost control. White has lost control completely. And what's happening here? Everybody's in the ring. How long could I stay in the game with everything that I'm learning and how much of a fruitful career could I still go on and have if I was to keep on improving? Yeah, I may have lost a few along the way, but it doesn't mean I'm going to give up. I'm still the same dog, man. Maybe a few years longer in the two, but shit, I still got a hell of a bite. We're trying to check one more, but he can't. Eight years ago, Anthony Joshua, as a rising star, knocked out Dillian White, avenging his previous loss to his rival in the amateurs. It felt like a bigger fight than a British heavyweight title fight. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight. Where are you running? Come on. It was just bad intentions for years. I called it bad intentions because I knew both guys wanted to hurt each other. You know, both guys wanted to damage and knock each other out. In my third amateur fight, I had boxed Dillian White. I invited all my friends down and um, I lost to Dillian White. I was supposed to rematch him in the amateurs, but he got banned from the amateurs because they found out he was a professional kickboxer with a vast amount of experience. So you've got Dillian representing, you know, the island of Jamaica. And you've got me representing the continent of Africa. You've got South London versus North London. You've got two British born heavyweights. I didn't understand what a sportsman was. I'm only, honestly, hand on my heart, I'm only learning that today. At the time, I was so disconnected from what a sportsman was. I was just fighting, I wanted to have a good scrap. I didn't really grasp what I was doing. I was just going with the current, and I happened to be against Dillian White, someone who I faced in the amateurs. There was a lot in the mix. It was just bad intentions for, for years. You're supposed to sit back on your back foot and rotate to get your leverage. What I done, I leant over my front hand, which puts me in the firing line and boom, left hook hits oh, me. That's left hook for the left hook neck. Oh, and he's shaking neck, here. That's that counter left hook we were talking about earlier. Joshua's wobbling. Now what a moment this is for White. Early in the second round, Joshua shaken down to his foundations. I didn't see it coming because I wasn't interested in what's coming back. I'm just interested in attacking Dylan. And um, it was a peach of a punch and it shook me down to my boots. Right hook. White can certainly take a punch. Oh, and he shook Joshua. Joshua. He shook Joshua. Joshua's hurt. Joshua's in big trouble. 
know, this was the first time he completely sold out the O2, but it was the first time he took a it's risk, really, in a fight. You know, it was the first fight that he had where we felt, blimey, this is a real, real fight. This is what professional boxing is all about. It's hard to suspect to hit people and have people fall over. It was everything I didn't want to see. You know, it was pure emotion. Tactics were out the window. Jab was non-existent. It was, I want to hurt this guy. Joshua was putting his tongue out, you know, goading him when he was hitting him. Where has this come from? What are you doing? But at the same time, whack. When the uppercut landed, I knew it was good night in Vienna. I knew it was good night. The uppercut was peach perfect. I've been cool and respective to what I'm respectful towards him, but he's he's a d you know he's he's a d he tries to do like sly niggly things. Boy, Rude boy, shut up. Young as smoke, Dylan. This is a genuine rivalry. It's not a. I made up rivalry like you were trying to do with Franken. This is a genuine rivalry. It's, it's, it's a rivalry that's gone on throughout the years and it's a trilogy. So. You know what, Dylan's an idiot, you know? You know why? Because I showed him some respect. I just told him straight, Dylan, look, I knocked you out clean when we fought. But I said, let's forget about that because we both developed. So let's prove who's a better fighter now. Try to do little things and say little things that look we're little in things and repost the video of him knocking me out. I'm like, bro, that was like a thousand years ago. It's like, let's get the fight on now. This is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. Credit to him for taking the fight and then, you know, as much as I want to inflict pain and damage, I pray he leaves the ring healthy. I'm going to knock him out this time. I'll, I'll knock him out this time. No, I'll definitely knock him out this time, you know. I'll knock him out this time. And it, I'll knock him out, I'll get knocked out, trying to knock him out. I don't want to hear no talk when I whoop him and I knock him out and say, oh, he's had an easy touch, you should have fought Wilder. Thinking about whooping Dylan, but if Dylan steps in the ring with me, trust me, you best believe me. These fierce competitors will go to war once again. With the score tied at one to one if you count the amateurs, pride and glory are on the line. Joshua, determined to return to his dominant form, aims to prove his mettle after recent setbacks. But White, hungry for redemption, is eager to settle the score once and for all. Their deep-rooted rivalry guarantees a battle of epic proportions. I just think after you know, the way Fury dismantled and, and took Dylan White out. With the jab, so he's measuring, measuring, and then just sends the right of a gun through the middle. Richie, whatever puncture in boxing history that you want to talk about, nobody's thrown. Why would he get another chance to fight Joshua? I think it's a waste of time. This will be Joshua's second fight with trainer Derek James who will hope to recapture Joshua's explosive power boxing style he displayed early in his career. Joshua is an explosive puncher who is as fast as he is strong, and can turn a fight around with the slightest opening. To beat White, Joshua needs to keep White on the end of his jab and look to land a right uppercut between White's guard when he tries to charge in. Uppercuts have been Dillian's nightmare and a clear sign of weakness. White has been in perpetual pursuit of this rematch, but his recent form is troubling. White is 2-2 in his last four fights, losing twice by knockout and looking absolutely dreadful against Franklin last year. Potentially career ending. I lost against Fury. Dillian White flat on his back at Wembley Stadium with an absolute peach of a punch. He beats the count, but he doesn't know where he is. I came back and fought and defeat Jermaine Franklin. Everybody said, oh, he, he didn't do so well. But look, now Franklin went to run with Joshua. Everybody saying, oh yeah, Joshua's working a soft new coach. Do you forget I was working with Buddy for six weeks? You know, completely changed my, my I went from what's remarkable, I went I changed my style completely in six weeks. I'm six foot six, got long levers. Watch any fighter in history that's six foot six and got long levers. How do they box? Behind their jab. Stick move. Stick, move. Anthony Joshua does it, it's a problem. You know what I'm trying to say? It's crazy. Okay, what do you want me to do? Box like Mike Tyson, five foot. Am I in the holy foot? No, I'm tall. I want to start using my range, using my, using what God's given me, my range. Box from a distance, be clever. But each of their own in it, styles. Maybe they want to see the old reckless, not thinking, brawn before brains. 
AJ, this is chess, not checkers. Really? Mate, it's a shit fight, but who knows? You, know. you can't call it a shit fight because yeah, you fought him in your last yeah, fight, bro. Well, well, look at this, watch this. I came up for a loss, I fought an undefeated fighter. Okay. Come on, loss, he's fighting someone who was just beaten. I can do what I want in that ring, when I want. That's the blessing. You've seen, like, I can move around for 12 rounds like I did with Ruiz. You know, I could stick behind a jab like I can control a fight with Franklin. I can get dropped on multiple times and get up like I did with the first fight with Ruiz. I can take a beating like I did for 12 rounds with Usyk. I can give a beating like I did the first fight with Dylan. Been through it all. Let's see who brings what and when out of me. Next stop, August 12th. Let's see what happens. There's a lot of cowards in this game. I'm here to fight. I want to fight. I don't give a fuck about losses, win, draws. I don't care. I just want to fight and entertain and give the fans good fights. You know, these guys, it's killing boxing. They fucking keep fucking dodging and fucking. But Joshua's a cunt, mate. He's a cunt. Uh, yeah, we'll see how Joshua Why are we doing this on the phone? Because my camera was way back. Well, he's got some fucking excuse. Why are we doing this on the phone? Because it was what, here see, and there. You, you don't respect me anymore, do you? Now it's just fucking, I'm just... Before you see him, you probably sit down, mic, camera, everything. You used to bring two extra batteries because one would run out, you have to change. Now you're just fucking doing it, some shit. Can I say one fight. thing? I literally called you as you was walking out of here. I had to... You, there yeah, and then. You, 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 there you and then. For you used to run and get yourself a minute. Wait, wait, I'll come back. Now you're fucking... If I'd come back, you would have gone. This fucking iPhone 7. As well, you're taking a piss. Though White has always been a rugged battler with a ton of heart, he's barely evolved since the first Joshua fight. He has been in some grueling battles and has recently shown signs of wear in his last few fights. An ancient Alexander Povetkin shut him down with one punch, and he looked helpless for the six rounds Tyson Fury pounded him for. In his return fight, he looked awful against Franklin, with many feeling he got a gift decision. All signs point to White being on the decline. To that point, Joshua doesn't possess the same sense of self-belief he had as well. A desperate White is finally facing his hated rival, presumably with his pride and career on the line. If White can turn the clock back to his old form for just one night, he may have the defining moment he's been chasing his entire career. I want that money and power Money and power Fire for life Your hunger never dies I'm gonna smoke Dylan I'm gonna run through Wilder I don't wanna fight for the championship I know serious guys And serious guys, they don't need to try and And walk around like oh, It's like the, the guys that go to the gym that, that just takes juice and bang weights They just walk around like, oh yeah, I'm, I can't bench five plate. No, you'll still get knocked out, bro. Relax.